Okay, now you might wonder why I cut those wood blocks, okay? Now let's just say, if you're doing this job as quickly as possible, it's not that big a deal. But let's say you weren't originally planning on replacing your brake calibers, and you got into the job, and you realized, you know what, I got to have new brake calibers. But it's late at night, the auto parts stores are all closed, so the job's going to have to wait till the next day. Or even if it's a situation where all you got to do is run to town to get uh, get uh, a brake caliber. You don't want all your brake fluid to leak out, particularly if your car has analog brakes. So doing this, putting it to two pieces of wood on this uh, block, sandwiching it with a pair of vice grips, welder's vice grips, that's not going to make a watertight seal. It's not going to prevent all the brake fluid from leaking out, but it will slow it down enough where that thing can sit overnight and your master cylinder won't run out of fluid so you don't have to worry about bleeding your entire brake system. So that's what uh, cutting those little blocks of wood was all about. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the new caliper. Okay, we can see our new caliper here. It has the two brand new uh, copper washers like we were talking about. It's got the brand new uh, banjo fitting, brand new bleed screw, and uh, so what I was mentioning before, yeah, the, the, re the rebuilders, they aren't going to care if you keep those things for, uh, and it's also got brand new uh, bolts to hold it on. So they aren't going to care if you keep these things handy, uh, these items here. They aren't going to care if you keep these things that I mentioned earlier. Where did I even put that? There it is. Those items there, plus the uh, copper washers. Um, they aren't going to care. And they might save your butt someday. They don't take up much room. Now, there's one other thing. We're replacing uh, calipers, and they look pretty much the same. The left one and the right one look pretty much the same, but you should compare and make sure you're, because there's a difference between the left and the right side even though they look at a glance exactly the same. And the difference is <coughs> this bleed screw. It's always going to be on the top, okay? That, I mean, that's the way you want it. It always wants to be like that. It, you don't want to have it like that because you, if you look at a bottle of water, the air is always on the top, isn't it? So in order to force the air out, that bleeder screw has to be on the uppermost part of the reservoir. The brake fluid is going in here through this bolt. And it's going to force that air. That air is on the top. It's going to force it all out like that. If it was like this, if you put the wrong one on the wrong side, um, the fluid would go in here. But when you open this up, it would just push the fluid out because the air would be just hanging out up here. You'd never be able to push the air out. It would just push on the fluid here. The air would get a little bit compressed, but it would just hang out in the highest area, just sitting there. And the fluid would come out, and you, you might think, oh, I got the brakes all the way bled. The fluid's coming out, no air is. Everything must be okay. No, that, that air is just sitting right up there in that top area of that reservoir with no place to escape. Where if it's like this, air is always going to be higher than the liquid, and the air will be forced out by the liquid. And when, when you have the bleeder on the top, when you see the air stop coming out and you see nothing but the uh, liquid brake fluid, then you know everything's bled properly. So that's something you want to make sure when you replace these... Uh, calipers make sure you have the left one the, the left one on the left side and the right one on the right side and the easiest way is to compare it to your the one you just took off the car and right now at, at first glance here it looks like we got the wrong one doesn't it it looks like here you see how the bleed screws on that side on this one and this one so this one must be for the other side of the car i'm going to get the other one and if they look exactly the same we can be pretty confident that uh, the other one's the one we should use i'll be right back all right, now I got the other caliper, and look at that. This is probably the right one. You see how the bleed screw there? They're both on this side of the banjo, where the banjo bolt goes. So this is the correct one for this size. There's also a part number on there. I don't always trust these, but it is also the same part number. Uh, we'll see if when we do the other side, if uh, the part number matches up. Uh, this one ends in eight. We'll see what the one on the other side does. Uh, ends up being uh, what, what digit is the last number. But same part number, <clears throat> same way in appearance. So we can be really co reasonably confident that this one is for the right side of our car. Okay. Now we're going to uh, put our new caliper on. We'll put one copper washer on our banjo bolt. 
And here's something interesting too. This will kind of make things frustrating when you're working on cars quite often. There's quite often a difference between the OEM and the aftermarket uh, pieces. A classic example is right here. The banjo bolt, that's an OEM banjo bolt. And it's got a head there. That ended up being about 16 millimeter. And this one here, this is for the aftermarket one. It's the same size bolt, but for some reason the head's different. And, uh, well, it must be about a 12. The 10 doesn't fit on. So that can be frustrating sometimes when you're working on a car um, with something on one side. It won't be the same as on the other side. You've been working on the driver's side, and you move all your tools over to the passenger side, and you're wondering, why the heck, why don't I have the right tool? Why doesn't my tool fit? Well, it's because it's a different size on the other side. So something to just be aware of. So we'll take off this clamp, and then we'll... We got our copper washer on our banjo fitting, so we'll put our put it through the block here. And you want to make sure everything's orientated right. So you want to be careful here. This might take you more than one attempt to get right. Uh, you see that tab there? Usually that block will go right up against that tab in one direction or another, and we'll find out what is correct. This obviously is going to be sitting on the car like this, approximately like this. So I'm going to guess that brake line goes on like that and uh, we'll put it together and we may or may not be right we gotta put our other copper washer on because if you have this hose twisted uh, that is not particularly good sometimes if you look at that block you got at least a 30 percent chance because you know it's not going to go the tab isn't going to go where that line is so it's either going to be here here or here a test fit, it looks like it's going to be about like that. So we're going to put it together with it about like that. And we should be correct. Don't just want to turn on by hand, then you got to start getting suspicious. You don't want to ever have to bear down on something with a wrench. But sometimes they're just, just a little too hard to turn by hand. I would suspect that I could turn this by hand <coughs> if it had the same large head blade the way the OEM one did. But the smaller head is just harder for me to turn my finger. Both of my copper washers on. One last check there. You, might, you want to make sure that that is correct. At this point, I'm going to just set this on here really quick to make sure my orientation of my brake line is right. And I believe that is right. Um, any other position, this brake line would not have been in the right place. This is the way it naturally wants to go. That's probably the correct position for that to be orientated there, such as that. So now we can tighten that up with confidence. And I think what I'm going to do, rather than bearing down on this right now, I'll wait until I get all the bolts. I'll bear down on that once I get it all bolted up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the brake pads. All right. Now, when it comes to the pads themselves, you don't have to worry too much. The, the right side and the left side are the same. The only thing different is the inside and the outside, and it's pretty well self-explanatory which is which. This will be the inside one. The prongs, you can see, they will fit right inside the uh, wheel cylinder. And this one's got uh, these clips that go over the outside of the uh, brake caliper. And another thing, when you're doing brakes, particularly when you're doing drum brakes, don't tear apart both sides right away. Do one side and then the other. That way you can go over the other side and compare and make sure, do I have this right, do I have that right? It's, it's a real good reference because it's a real live thing rather than just a picture of the book or, or a video. Um, so what we got here is our new pads. And uh, this will give you an idea about how worn out the old pads were. Um, the new one still had some material on it. The, the old, the, I mean, the outside, inside one had some material left. The outside had none. But look at the difference between those two. And you see, even the less worn inside one is pretty worn out. By the time brakes get worn out that way, uh, it's very common to have one showing quite a bit more wear than the other. So we'll put this back together here. We're going to snap in our uh, pads, and since the wheel's round, you see, pretty obvious, you want it facing like that, okay? So it's not gonna go in like that, it's gotta go like that. Put on these, uh, these pads inside into this uh, 
piston on the caliper is not the easiest thing to do in the world. I'm just not in the mood to fight with it. Let's do it this way. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take a step backward to go a step forward here. Because I got the other side in pretty easy doing it this way. I'm going to take out this uh, line that I just put on. We will be careful not to lose our copper washers. That little bolt head makes it much, much diff more difficult to take off. And I might get, bring my 12 millimeter wrench back with me. There we go. Don't want to lose our copper washer. There's our copper washer. And we'll just uh, see if we can remember the orientation. So this is how I got the other side in. Put it in the vise. And I got my brake pad. I stuck it approximately where I thought it needed to go. And I tried squeezing these tangs a little bit with some needle nose twice, just enough to make it start. Um, it's a real bear. And uh, then I just took a handle of the hammer and probably pounded it in. See, that didn't work too bad. I, uh, I don't even know if I could do that with it on the car. But that got the job done. Okay, so you saw how rusty everything was in a car that spends its winters in the salt. Uh, so we're going to put some anti-seize compound on our caliper bolts. And we will put our caliper on. And now we'll have to put on our front pad and that just slides down over the uh, caliper. And if this is hard to do, you can pry it with your uh, with your screwdriver too, if this is difficult. There we go, slides right in place. So you can't get the inside and the outside on these mixed up, it's pretty easy. And this goes right on like this. Slide pins, they need to be pushed back. And if you're reusing your old calipers, these have to slide really easy, okay? If not, you have to take them apart and uh, grease them, clean them up, and put some grease on them, and preferably this brake type of grease. And they have to slide easy. Let's see how easy our old ones slid. Just for not easy at all, sports fans. So that's another reason to use new calipers, because this would be one more thing to do. We would have to replace these boots and make it so these can slide. And that would have taken a certain amount of time. They're pretty, they're in there pretty good. So I wasn't feeling too bad about using new calipers anyway, but uh, Look at that, we don't have to do the job cleaning up those slide pins, so I feel better about that already. So let's see if I can get this into place. I got the slide pins moved back. Now I gotta get this in place. And I get and this, the contact area where that uh, brake caliper slides is right there and right there. They say you should grease these up, okay? Because that's, that's where the sliding takes place. I honestly don't know. Every one time I do a brake job on a car, these are 100% dry. And how couldn't they be? You know, the grease is out, is out in the open, it's not covered up. So it's going to just kind of evaporate away the way grease does if it's nothing to seal it off and protect it. But they say do that. Well, it makes us feel good. We got to make sure we don't get grease on the rotor itself, too. So, uh... We're just going to do it because that's what they say that you should do. But I honestly question the value of it. I really do. I don't think, I bet if we took this apart, this break apart on six months from now, I bet it would be where that grease was would be as dry as any other part of this. Uh, rear, uh, whatever you want, to do, backing plate. But I bet you couldn't tell the difference between where we greased it and where we hadn't. I really don't know about the value of that greasing those, but that's what they say you should do. So sometimes, if it's not hard to do and you can't see any real good reason not to do it. You just follow the advice of the experts. And uh, and that's uh, what we're doing here right now. 
putting in these bolts that hold on the these calipers. What I'm doing right now is I'm putting bolts in right here and right here on this caliper, okay? Now, there might be a torque spec on these and uh, we might look that up. Where the hell is that? We might look up the torque spec on these. That's a number 10. When we're all done. I'm gonna guess on that. I'm gonna guess it right now. See how good a guesser. I'm gonna guess 25 foot pounds. What do you guys think? So I will tighten this up and proceed. Then I'll get everything out of the way. I'll make sure, I'll put on my banjo fitting bolt. I still haven't done that. And then when we're done with that, while well, I'm getting things out of the way to put the wheel on, uh, my cameraman look up the torque spec on these, uh, on these uh, uh, bolts that hold the wheel. Uh, uh, Calipers on. Here's something. Here's something real fun. See, remember we talked about OEM and uh, ha ha. Look at that. Let me just show you a perfect example. Let me show you a perfect example here about OEM. After I get a few threads on this bottom bolt, uh, for a while there I couldn't find the bolts that came with this uh, these new calipers. So I screwed. I looked for them reasonably hard. And I got frustrated. I'm not looking for it anymore. And I just noticed uh, the bolt was under the car. Same length, same diameter shank, same threads. But for some reason, they love to play this little game where they put different head sizes on. And I'm going to show you what I mean right here. I, I've already showed you the banjo bolt that they're different, different sizes. I, I mean, I cannot believe that a bolt with a smaller head is going to be less expensive which was the case with the banjo bolt and here we are with the caliber bolts the OEM one actually has a larger head so who knows what the game is they play but there's the OEM one that's got a 10 millimeter head on it and here's the aftermarket one it's a 12 millimeter the only reason I I had one I aftermarket an OEM one there and well once I found the other after I just put it into have them all the same <laughs> have it the other side the same so you know the poor sap who works on this car next time just to save him a little bit of frustration that's the only reason I did it just I can keep them all the same and maybe save somebody a headache someday uh, maybe that good karma will come back to me right so that's what we did there so let me tighten this up and while I'm uh, tightening up the banjo bolt my cameraman will look at the torque specs on these caliber bolts I'm going to guess they're 25. We'll see how close my guess is. All right, sports fans. We got her just about buttoned up here. Check the torques back. I guess 25. I guess 25. Nope. Yeah, 25 is what I guessed. What is it actually according to the Hayes manual? Are you ready for it? Was I right? I have a 16. How much would I be able to fit the torque wrench in here? There won't be enough room. Let's see. Ah, that's really funny, isn't it? <laughs> All that worrying about torque. You see that? Look at that. How do we torque that? Okay. Give, give one more try. We'll use my little torque wrench. Here we go, sports fans. If this doesn't do it, if this little one doesn't fit, we're not torquing it. We're just going to go with what I think. Uh, 16, 14, 12 foot pounds is the... Same thing as 144 inch pounds, right? And I can't hardly use this one because the pointer's sticking the wrong way and there's all kinds of reasons. This is ne meant not to be torqued, okay? We're just gonna do what, what I think feels good. That's the torque spec on this, what I think feels good. We're gonna check to make sure we're in tighten. Yes, we're in tighten, it's going clockwise. And that feels good. And that, that didn't feel too good. That feels good. And finally, one thing I like about these oh, uh, the uh, aftermarket ones is uh, they're all the same heads, same size heads. That was kind of convenient. Okay, that was good. And we're gonna put this cap on. My new, do, do our new uh, calipers have uh, these little plugs for the uh, 
bleed screws? I don't think they do. So they go on there. Now the other thing we're going to have to do obviously is bleed these brakes and that's fairly easy and we'll do that next. All right, sports fans, we're almost done with this job. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we prevent ha from happening what I talked about in the very beginning, uh, those uh, wheels, aluminum wheels sticking to these uh, metal uh, iron hubs. And uh, so we'll put on some anti-seize compound. Uh, we already got anti-seize compound on our lug nuts. Our lug nuts came off relatively easy. But with a little bit of anti-seize compound smeared over that, we should never have problems taking off that